I asked earlier who was in the panel last year. Who came to the panel last year to see? Fantastic. Oh, not that many. Do you want to introduce yourself so they know who all of us are? Yeah, let's do that. I'm Kristen Baker. I'm the president and CEO of Telefilms. Um, I'm a director and a producer, and I've directed a couple of sex scenes. <laughs> and some makeup scenes. Two of them happen to be on the panel. I am Guinevere Turner. I have. Yes, right. Yes, fucking Quentin Turner. Yes, indeed. Best of the best. I have. I, I mean, I worked on the TV show The L Word. Yeah. I have the, both written a lot of sex scenes and then sort of watched how the directors manage them and talked to the directors about that, so that's fun. I've been in a ton of sex scenes. <laughs> and I've also directed sex scenes, not the least of which is one that I was also in. Wow. Well-rounded. <laughs> Are you coming here? <laughs> My name is Marina Rice Bader, and I have directed, well, let's just say this. Um, I write, direct, and produce. I have created five narrative features for the lesbian niche audience under the banner of Soul Kiss Films. Soul Kiss Films is now retired, and I'm launching a new production company called Play Big Pictures. I'm moving away from telling women's stories to telling universal stories with women at the center through a female view. So, 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 women saving the world, the women going on crazy adventures, the women, you know, making the tough calls and uh, doing all those great things that historically men get to do. So, that's where I'm headed. Fuck yeah! Uh, my name is Bridget McManus. I'm a, I'm a actress, a comedian, a director, a producer, writer. I've written uh, a bunch of set scenes. Guinevere! is amazing and she, I'm so blessed, to starred in the movie that we screened last night called Alice and Iza with Mandala Rose for Mandala's Topless, just another reason to watch it. Uh, Kristen directed it, it's available on telefilms.com so if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. But I did um, I did another series with Kristen called Me About Romantic Drama Series, Sex Scenes on that, and then I did a mockumentary series with my beautiful, amazing wife, who's in the background there to take pictures of us. Um, called McManus Land, where we were rolling around in bed, too. So, um, I love to watch women have sex. Yay! 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 Okay, do we want to take any questions first, or do you guys want to talk about stuff? No, here, here's what I would have uh, uh, no, Sorry, I'm like literally, sorry. Um, this, I think I want to sort of start this off, because last year we did a directing and acting and sex scene panel that actually was pitched by Guinevere. Yeah, I was then, sort of going to say, like, this was totes my idea. It was totes my idea. And we gave you credit last year. Okay, yeah, but yeah. then she had to go do this, like, little thing, this little movie called Charlie Says, which she wrote, which is amazing and huge. And out in theaters. And out in theaters May 30... 10. 10. Woo! May 10. <laughs> um, and so I just sort of, like, as the person who said, like, Let's, we should do this at Classicon, and then you know, end up not being able to do Like, what was your reasoning for feeling like this needs to be a panel at class? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, for me, like, so I, in the 90s, was a lesbian, out lesbian in my early 20s. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like, you know, having, you know, doing sexy photo shoots as an activist practice was what we did for Queer Nation, for Act Up. Like, we were making t-shirts that is, which were just about visibility. And so I made a movie called Go Fish that was about, like, just, you know, lesbians living their lives, like, with, a, you know, fanfare. And, um, and, you know, on the day when I had to do the sex scene in that movie, that my co-star was, is a good friend of mine. And I was like, oh, wow, I've never done this. And this is someone that I love and trust, and this is the most awkward thing that's ever happened to me. And, but like, I wanted, I it was trying to push through it for empowerment, for representation, for visibility. And that was so interesting. Um, 
and we chickened out. I mean, we chickened out. Like, we wanted to be more intense than we were, and we went as hard as we could, and we always used the hunger. Oh, yeah. We always used the hunger. Who's seen The Hunger in this room? So The Hunger, people, yeah. if you haven't seen it, is a, is a movie that is not about lesbianism, but it's the first lesbian sex scene I ever saw. And it's between Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon. And it's, oh, wait, yeah, I, did, I have seen that. I was like, how have you not seen this movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot what it's It's the yeah, first yeah. lesbian sex scene I ever saw. And I was like, yeah, wait, what? how does it work? <laughs> Are there veils? And, and is there opera music? Like, yes. like, it looks amazing, but like I don't really know how to do it. <laughs> so, our, so anyway, the, the whole point was that we really wanted to do something that felt real, and then we didn't fully succeed, although I think it felt more real. And then the reason that I want to talk about that is because you can feel like you want to write or direct or act in something that like pushes the boundaries and really challenges us and makes you know the the audience feel sexy on the day in the moment i'm like wait what is sexy yeah. and like how do we you know we're actors and we're writers like we're not actually having sex and actual sex if you photographed i mean if you videoed it it's not, that's not what belongs in movies. That's porn or that's like home really. porn, and that's fine for what it is, but like there's such an interesting balance. That's a very long answer to that question. <laughs> that's a great answer. Have you, anyone ever seen a sex scene where, you're, where you thought that that's not how it happened? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or when like girls are in bed and they're wearing their bras and in a tank top, they're like, that's not how it <laughs> But it's also not pretty to just like, see like long boobs in the thing without the bras. Like I'm speaking from from my own. <laughs> but so th I think there's a there's a there's a reason that you know these women that have directed um, movies like you take it you put, take them into account. There's an art to it. There's a choreography to it. And also there's a you know in terms of lesbian sex like there has to be. So the first time I directed a short film, it just for various reasons that I was also in it and I barely knew my co-star but the first thing we had to do was a sex scene <laughs> and I had written the sex scene as a, you know not a great first date sex in which she just gets on top of me humps me sounds amazing to me <laughs> keep, keep going uh, just like humps me a lot and it's just like oh and then it's done. And it's, I mean, it's hilarious. It's a, it's a short film called Hummer, and like, you know, the camera's over here, so all you see is my face, and, which is a very traditional sort of straight sex thing. And in the moment, I was like, hi, I, I know I don't know you that well, but I'm sort of your own director, so you're gonna lay on top of me, and then just like hump me like you mean it. That's what Carmen says to me, I'll do that. I think you mean it. <laughs> And that was incredibly awkward. I was like, this is, like, feels inappropriate, but I want, I, I was replicating, you know, experiences that I'd had, lesbian ones, yeah. like, where I felt like, the, I'm pro-humping, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there's humping and there's like humping like, am I, am I still here, or am I, or am I the pillow? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's real and internal. You know, yeah. that's internal, that's us, that's our community. Like, I don't, I don't feel like a lot of, heterosexual women experience humping until, you know, but I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what heterosexual women are. I know, I was wondering if you just keep talking. What? <laughs> when you directed, I mean, you've done so many movies, but you've directed sex scenes, do you just say lay on top of her and hump? What, how was your approach? <laughs> And, and they're they're all extremely different yeah. through uh, you know what we go through as content creators. Sometimes you really magically get all the time you plan to have to shoot the love scene. You've had time to sit down with the actresses and kind of walk through it a little bit, you know, with their clothes on or lingerie on or whatever, and say, okay, at this time, because of the moment, it'll be whatever, whatever. And then there's other times. Like with um, Anatomy of a Love Scene, the two actresses were so comfortable with each other, and they were both they were both models, so they were so comfortable being naked and just letting the organic thing happen. I did very little choreography because I asked them, "What's best for you?" That's you know you always really try to do that with your actresses, be super respectful, 
find out what their comfort level is. Would, you know, are you comfortable doing this? Are you comfortable doing that? These girls were really comfortable doing everything. So <laughs> it was it was fantastic, and they did a great job on just letting it happen organically. And the funny thing is, we didn't even talk about it, but you can see in the footage, because they fall in love during this, during this on-camera love scene as two actresses, and you can see the exact moment when they fell in love. And I don't—I never got to ask them, did you guys plan this out? Because you know, through all this beautiful sex, there's one moment with this really deep eye contact, and it's like, oh my god, when I watched it, my whole body got covered with, with the goosebumps, goosebumps. And then there's other ones with It Is Impossible Things, which has a very long love scene, but it's beautiful, and it, one of the actresses is pregnant, and you very, very rarely see that. She just happens to be the most beautiful pregnant person on the planet. Um, and then the other one, and they were both super comfortable with what we talked about, and it was really an artist, more of an artistically done thing. But then, it was a full-on orgasm. And I mean a real full-on orgasm, not the movie orgasms where you get started and all of a sudden, 10 seconds later, you know, the girl's having the orgasm. This is like a full-on beginning-to-end orgasm. And while the sex wasn't real, I had my, and we only got one take. Um, this was one of those opportunities, those things where all of a sudden you have no time. You thought you had time, now you have no time because something is happening. And you go, okay, well, I still have to do this. So I literally laid down with my head out of the frame and talked her through this one opportunity we had for her to orgasm. So it, it's just stunning and beautiful and both the actresses were so committed, but that was more of a, we had to do it in a very different way where it really wasn't organic, but you could never tell, it looks beautiful. Kirsty, can I ask how you approach directing sex scenes? Um, I tell people to get on top of Guinevere. <laughs> Uh, no, you know, you have, it's, it, it's in the script, so it's not like you kind of go, surprise, there's a sex scene, ha, ha, JK, you didn't know this. So, but it's, the conversation that I have is, what makes you feel sexy? What, what, you know, what do you, like, how, like, how far do you, like, especially with Mandala, because she, uh, we were talking about, like, how naked is she? So we're talking about Alice and Alice Dizza. Dizza. And she was like, oh, I could like, I could go topless and you know, have like these like, I have these cute little, you know, like tub wave things. And I was like, okay, cool. So let's find some spaces where, um, you know, if that makes sense, like we'll do that. And so I think the most important, it doesn't work if the actress doesn't feel sexy and comfortable. If there's any part of that where they are put in an uncomfortable situation, the energy changes. And I think you can feel that. And so like, and I almost think like no amount of good acting is going to like override if you do or do not feel sexy in the moment. And so I think that's my come from in every, every time is, you know, do, like, you know, how much skin do you want to show? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's right for the character. Let's talk about right, what's right for the project. And then, so there's always a conversation before and then in the moment, I think something that is always important to think about is, I think sometimes in the moment, actresses can um, want to be more comfortable than they really are. Is it an alarm or a phone? Hello? It's okay. Are you late for something? No. Yeah. You're here, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes actresses can like work their way, like try and work their way into feeling comfortable, and they're not always because they like they wouldn't do it for the project. And yeah. so I think having a conversation that's very clear before you get into that situation is really important, so that later they're not calling you and going, you know, I really didn't like that I took my shirt off, and I don't want you to use any of that. And then you get into a really weird situation in the you know in the like big picture world having worked on the L word, where there was gonna be a lot of lesbian sex and there's gonna be a lot of negotiation around that. Everybody has a nudity writer. And it's, you know, it's literally what they're willing to do. Hilarious. What's in yours? <laughs> I am, do you have one? I no. <laughs> uh, no, because, you know, it was only in a few episodes. No, there's like a new project. Like, do you have one? A nudity writer? Yeah. Like, uh, it, yeah, it says, make me look hot. <laughs> <laughs>
sign here. <laughs> Um, but in, in the case of the L word, hilariously, I don't know how many people in this room are familiar with the L word. <laughs> but, so Jennifer Beals, who plays uh, Bat, and um, uh, you know Lauren Messina, like you know, obviously they had to do endless sex scenes, and but their nudity writers, day one, and I know this so much because of people who directed them, their nudity writers are complicated. So Jennifer. You can show her boobs, but not her nipples. Oh, I thought they were, like, she had a bronze so often, I thought there was a no boob writer in there. But boobs, no nipples. So, like, oh, so like yeah. The, oh, and yeah, so, yeah. and for Laurel, it was all nudity, but never my ass from behind. <laughs> and so, so, like, so for my friends who directed them, the season after season, they're like, oh, he's like, oh my god, this is, these are such like specific, interesting <laughs> sort of things that we have to navigate with women who have sex in almost every episode. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, like, it will be in the contract if you're working on a bigger project. So, in, you know, we tell it to has smaller budgets, so it's not necessarily in a, in a contract piece, but, you know, I mean, if Jennifer Beals was like, you couldn't show my boobs when I'm on nipples, I'd be like, yep, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. And I always, you know, as an actor, I always, always, well, I should say, I learned. Uh, do get really specific about what I can and cannot do because I have also, so I was in a film called The Watermelon Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I had a complicated relationship with the director who was also the star of the movie. And I will talk shit about Cheryl Donye, and I wish she was in this room. It's not, it's not bullshit, we're friends, but <laughs> in the moment, so she is the director and the star of the movie. We have a sex scene, we're playing girlfriends. Uh, it was one of the second times I've ever done a sex scene. We get into the room, you know, when you do a sex scene, you close the set, like it's only, like, who needs to be there? The DP, the, the boom operator, maybe one other person, and the actors, the, obviously the director. Um, and we get into the bed, and we get completely naked. And she leans up in her arm and looks at me and goes, so what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, and I was like, <laughs> and it was like one of those things where I was like, okay, it's the 90s. Uh, it's a bad movie, representation, implode. Uh, but it was a very, it was a rough day at the office. And, um, and I, you know, it, it, but it taught me a lot about like how to make actors feel comfortable, how to be a director, how to think about like where the boundaries are. Like we don't just have sex and be like, oh, it's not, you know. Like, it was, it was really, it was really, uh, you know, I cry. Communication is huge. Yeah, yeah. It really, really is upfront because the number one most important thing you can do, literally beyond everything else, is make your actors feel comfortable and respected, and you do your job as a director, as the person who they are putting their trust in, and you protect them at all costs. If you see, you know, even though you've done your shot list, now all of a sudden you see one of the moves and it's not a flattering angle anymore, but, yep, you know, because, and they're not moving back and you see it's just gonna continue at this unflattering angle, you just cut it. You don't want anybody to waste their time and go back to the top. You always protect them and you let them know that you are protecting them. You will always have their interests first, always. And also I think, this is in, in general for directing, when you, I'm just speaking from an actor perspective, when you cut suddenly, when someone's in the middle of something, if they're doing something that's vulnerable, like crying or having sex, or whatever, like, can't do that. Like, we can't. No, we, no, we can tell them. Oh, we're gonna start. Do you see lights go down? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I was telling them. Like, for me. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, wait, but anyway, Bridget McManus. <laughs> what about your sex scene? Um, no, you said you asked a lot of questions, Bridgie. I like asking questions. Um, has anybody here ever seen a bad sex scene on screen? Yeah, yeah. Would you <laughs> stop asking no, questions? No, because I'm talking about it. Just talk about it. About it. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to talk about things. Um, so the funny thing is, I said to my friend Jackie, and she said that 
the people that I've had sex with on screen that aren't my wife, she thinks I have chemistry with, but when I've, I've had sex with my wife, we did it in the back of a van for Maybell. And I had her grabbing my boobs like aggressively, which was just like, I kept yelling at her, grab her, because that's she, her character. She did, she yeah, grab it. Bridget said that. And it's like, the, the, you know, in your life, if you've had sex with different people, everybody's different. Some people like just take too long to do this, or they do that, or they're too rough, or whatever. And so, what I liked about Maybell, which is a, a romantic uh, drama series that Kristen directed that's on Tello, it's based in the South. It's about um, two women that get together. They were uh, lovers in like middle school, and then life brings them back together when they're in their thirties, and they fall back in love. And so there's a lot of bed scenes, and it's I just loved it. And I cast one of my best friends. Her name's Fred Nichols, and um, Kristen was just like so fantastic. We had two camera people in there, and we had our sound person, and that was it. And um, you didn't ask like what angles we liked, but we what was great about working with Kristen, who directed it, was she had us do a run through before we did a before she even directed us. She's like, well, how does this feel? What is this? What what is your natural instinct rather than like? And I think sometimes you see something that's like, and then you fist this person, and you're like, all you think about. <laughs> I don't know that I had an audition. Unfortunately, I had to be a straight person, and it gross. I know. Uh, I had an audition, and they, you walk into this, it's like a commercial. Like, you get a bank loan, and then you kiss them, right? And I'm like, why would I kiss them? Okay, fine, my husband and I get a bank loan, right? So as soon as this commercial audition, uh, um, cast manager goes, okay, so at the, end of this, at the end of this little audition, you have to kiss them, right? So in my mind, I go, I have to kiss a straight guy. I have to kiss a straight guy. So as soon as it starts, it's like action. And then I'm like, no, I just like grab his face and kiss him. Because like, I'm not in the dude. Like, I'm just like so fucking aggressive. And I can't get it and get it. But it was like, all I could think about was the kiss. And this, because we, we worked together beforehand, it's like, we're telling the story. So if you're just like focused on the sex of it, like, I'm going to be critical of um, blue is the warmest color. Yeah. That, for me, is the most bizarre sexy. That's just me. Have I gone off in it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just not, there's moments where I'm like, really? That looks very aggressive. It looks very hard. They're probably chased. Like, it just looks so very aggressive. That's not how I would, that's not how I would do it. Um, Your lesbians would have some water. Yeah, just like, if you don't have water, they can stop. The dog will be on the bed. Like, there's too many things in here. And one thing I want to say is, at the beginning of um, shooting Maybell, there's a moment where I go to kiss Fran Nichols, and she is supposed to pull back. And when we were doing it, I was like going to kiss her, and then I was pulling back before she would pull back, and then Kristen said something great. She went, no, lean in to kiss her. Lean in to kiss her, and then she said, fuck it, just kiss her. Even though you're going to not kiss her, just kiss her to get it over with. And I'm like, that's a good thing. That's a lot of times you hear in movies, when there's a sex scene, that they'll start with the sex scene because it, it's the most intimate thing, and then everything is more relaxed afterwards. So just get it out of the way. Like it's like that was. So I don't know if anyone in this room is familiar with the movie Fire. It's this yeah. really beautiful, beautiful lesbian yeah. film. Um, and I interviewed back in the day. I interviewed Deepa Mehta, the director, and I was working for the Advocate, and they were like, you know, tell her like, what was it like to like, you know. Uh, you know, ask ask her about. Anyway, I digress because that makes me angry. Um, <laughs> uh, but what Deepa said was because the, both of the characters, both of the actresses were heterosexual and there's a big age difference between them, that she was like, we're doing the sex scene day one, scene one. Yep. And I thought that's so interesting because. My, my, at the time, I was in my 20s, I thought like my instinct would be like, let them get to know each other. And then, so I said that to her and she said, no, like all sorts of weird shit could yeah. develop. Yeah. Like actually just, you know, and also now that I've done a lot of sex scenes, when you're working with someone and you're not, and you know that you have to do a sex scene, but you're waiting for that day, like it gets oh, weird, it. it gets super weird. Uh, with Mandala, for example, mm -hmm. like we've had, we've been through that a couple times, where it's like, okay, we're we gonna do the sex scene, like Mandala and I are not girlfriends and not in my mind you are, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know that it actually it is kind of it's better to just like rip off that bandaid. Yeah, I think as an actor, I'm not sure, 
as a director, I'm 100% sure. <laughs> Just like, yeah, let's totally. not like make this weird. Like it's already, it's already super weird. Super weird. And no amount of getting to know someone's gonna make it less weird. Yeah, yeah. I you know? don't think so. And also you, you, like one of your said, things can happen during the course. Oh, they make it worse. Oh, oh, I mean, they oh, yes, can meet each other. They don't like each other, and then you're asking them to get in, the, in bed and, and mm. do a realistic love scene. It's always better first day. First day. Fun. <laughs> can I give you a fun hell word time? Yes. 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 yes, bitch, yes. Um, <laughs> Mia, who plays Jenny, and Karina. <laughs> Wait, why is that funny? People hate Jenny, keep going. Yeah, there was, there was, you don't know her. Okay, Jenny, uh, don't know that. There was some with maybe Jenny's not our favorite character. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I have a low capacity for a lot of information. What happened? Some people don't like Jenny. Did you not know that? I do, I go Carmen. 
women. Uh, I have questions. Let's do okay. questions. But yes. Honestly, what I try to do is just create, you know, shadows in love scenes often can be stunning really nice. and beautiful, but you really have to commit to that because if you don't do it right, it's just going to look ugly. Mm. Um, so given the time I normally have to create a love scene, I don't have time for that. If I had a whole day for a love scene, I would be so into it. But I just make sure that there's sort of beautiful lighting all around the women so that the, the DP can kind of move in and work different angles and I don't ever have to worry about, you know, having to go, he's got, she's got, looks like she's got a black eye, mm -hmm. you know. And never ever, honestly, content creators don't say, oh, I'll fix it in post. <laughs> don't, don't ever do that. Just work to make sure that, that these ladies are going to look good from the beginning. You've already had, had talked about your shot list, so you already know where you're going, what you're going to see. And generally, the ladies will be on set beforehand with their clothes or their robes or maybe lingerie so you can see how, how the camera's going to look on the skin. And you just do a little walkthrough. And you make sure everything looks the way you want to. And then they feel comfortable because you've taken that time to make sure they well, are going to look good. But what I mean, like you're saying, Marina, is basically like if you're doing a, a scene where there needs to be a lot of movement and like, like room for actors to do what they do, that you actually do a 360 light yeah. situation. That's exactly right. It's, it's to fun. get all the angles. Yeah. yeah. That's it, right. And so you definitely want to do soft light. Have to. And, and the other thing that I I thought this was like, yeah, this was a funny moment for me. Is we were directing something in a series called Hashtag, and we we directed it just with the actresses first because it was really intimate. Then we brought the DP in and said, here's what we're gonna do. And then we sent the actresses out, and he lit it. And we were like, we, did, we want really soft light, we want 360 light. And he like looked around, and he was this really nice guy. He's like super technical, and he goes, just don't know where that light source would be coming from. <laughs> and yeah. I just looked at him, and I go, if anyone's thinking about the light source, we are doing yeah. this wrong. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the light source. Make them look beautiful. There's that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's all. That. So that's that's the place that I always come from. I'm like, I don't care. About my source, I care about two beautiful women. But also, what I'm hearing you say, tell me what you. But also, what I'm hearing you say is that <laughs> is that is that blocking blocking actors before it happens is also incredibly yeah. essential. So, like two things: letting from all places, yeah, block and blocking each other. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Um, you guys might not agree with this, but I suggest. Just the, only on the on the love scenes when you're doing the blocking that you actually record so that they can see it beforehand. You might never want. No, no, no. When you're, when you're, not, you're not in your robes. Shut up, bitches. In your robes. Just because sometimes, like, like if you're doing. Shut up. This is my job. When Rich directs her to me, she. Bitch, I have directed shit. Don't say that. I have directed. Um, I have directed two women, but um, but only because like if, if you're shooting like up here and they're so worried like my fat legs are out, my fat legs are out, and it's like well, I'm only doing this frame. That's what I'm saying is like just so they sit. You don't feel better when you look at your shot. You don't look, as an actor. You, like, you've never seen playback when you've ever done anything. Um, Not in love scenes. I a am super uncomfortable with the term love scenes, but um, <laughs> fuck scenes. What do you want me to call it? <laughs>
people use on sets when you are the person who's about to do a sex scene always makes me uncomfortable. Okay, good to know. Um, but not for me, though. Okay, that's right. Great question. We have a whole bunch. All right, uh, we'll go back and then forward. Oh, okay. I don't want to ask you this. No, 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 no,
Sorry, I cut you off. I've got PS PTSD about that. <laughs> I really, I really okay, want this down. Yeah, yeah. When you're filming, Allison is a, it has that as a, an older oh, no, character. Oh, no, gorgeous. Yeah, but it has an older character and a younger character. Anything you can't close for older kids. That's but, fine, she's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you do. You make it's and it's easy. You make one of your turner look amazing. <laughs> That's all you That's have to do. That's the only thing you have to worry about. And then the dowel will look fine. And then the dowel just does whatever she does. And you go, okay. But you, yeah, you. We really it's did. It's a contract. And I wanted. It has to look awesome. Well, part of it was. I mean, I, and I do, I do want to say this again. Like, it was not difficult at all to make one of your look amazing. She's but that contract. was. That was uh, the, the thing that we focused on was just making both people feel comfortable and make sure that they, they felt like it was a safe environment and a safe space. And that, and that, that and, and I, I think definitely after seeing it, I feel like Guinevere was like, oh no, I would, I, I would work with you again and put you on the spot. But I feel like you said that. Because we did, that was really <laughs> that we did. Because you made me look really good. Yeah. 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 So you, you, you really, you focus on that. I think if it's a romantic anything, if that's a big part of the storyline of a film or series, then you make sure you put the time in, you put extra time in, because if, 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 at the, if the whole thing is these two people get together and that scene happens and there's no chemistry, then what the fuck was the point of everything? So you spend time, energy, and money, and you pay for great lighting people. You, you make sure you have a, everything complimentary. Because if you don't have that, then, then I don't really care about other yeah. scenes where they're fighting, because all I want to do is re-watch that scene. That's why I think that another reason to put it first, like if you if you shoot something first and let's say they don't have chemistry and you're this is a big project that you funded and this is your baby, it's okay I think to sometimes recast if there's no chemistry. Like you should have already done that and made sure when you're auditioning. Like I'm not, never saying like throw anybody in the bus, but, but let's be clear. we need that. Let's be clear. Her question was about lighting. Well, I thought <laughs> 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 I mean, my answer was that you should pay for uh, numerous lighting people. Right, nice. which to me says, as an old actress, um, <laughs> that uh, you're saying that you need to like put extra money. <laughs> no, I just meant that you're going to be less now. But you weren't, you weren't, you, were, you came off of a project and you weren't happy with, with that, and you were like, this, that you're wait, did someone make me look old? <laughs> I can't remember. Really? I've been no, I'll, I'll money later. I'm like, I'm like a goldfish. <laughs> yeah. um, you're just very aware of angles. It's it's, it's much about well, angles. Right? Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, and actresses mean, usually know their angles. And I, yeah, and it, it, like regardless of your age, also yeah. when people say, when I say I have a good side, the non-actors are like, whatever. I'm like serious. If you're an actor and you don't know where the side is, then yeah. you're just not doing the work. <laughs> like, this is why I need a driver, because like my good side is here, so I actually look better when I'm in the passenger seat. <laughs> Because I don't think there was a new <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it was like no team shots, that was it. <laughs> yeah. All right, second, the second one? Well, they did below her mouth, didn't they? Wow. Hey, oh. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. But like, you have to think about who the director was, too, and and why he or she made the choices that they did around that. 
But also, like, you have to look at non-lesbian films. I mean, there's a spectrum of choices of sort of acceptability, like Hallmark level, would you watch this with your mom? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like, would you watch this with, like, your little sister? So, like, would you even watch this with anyone? <laughs> Because we know, we know, I know, especially as a kid, I was like, what does lesbian sex look like? Show me, show me. And like, then I'm like, porn. And I didn't have the internet when I was a fucking young lad. And like, I still, you know, would see, I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure that's not it. Snails wise. And then like, and so, you know, like I, you know, as a grown up now, I'm always like, okay, like let, how can I be? How can I give? How can I, especially because I'm always thinking about generation, new generation of people who can't necessarily find it, and you can see representations of us, but you will still have questions about sex. Yeah. But that's true of everyone, yeah. right? Of, well, except for all of these young men who are watching porn and now <laughs> subjugating women. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> like for me, like I've seen lesbian. Uh, sex scenes. I'll never say love scene again. Sex scenes <laughs> where I see these bold women are in lingerie, and some people do that. For me, that's just not my have been my experience. I'm always like that just seems a little bit dishonest. So what one thing I, I like is when we did Alice and Isa, um, Mandala was like I'm gonna wear the actual boy shorts that I wear, and she's topless in the movie. And it just when you see for me when you see the shot of her, it's like it just seems very natural. You can tell this is what she's wearing. She's not in a thong. That would, although she could probably act like a thong, she's a fantastic actor. She plays straight in something else. Like so, she has a, she's just great. But for me as a lesbian, I was like that's what that's what she would wear. That's what this character would actually wear. And she's wearing tomboy X, which is a very queer you know uh, line of clothing that a lot of lesbians wear. And so that just sounded, seemed very authentic. more and more women are doing all the jobs below the line, above the line, and it's it's relatively simple now. I won't say it's easy because you still have to look and you still have to do whatever's best for the project, find the person that's best, but you can easily find now female grips, gaffers, DPs, I mean, to do everything. And of course, if your film includes these intimate moments, it's, it's really quite wonderful to have a female DP, your you know, first AD if they're needed in there for some reason, but because that just feels better, it feels more, um, uh, it feels like more caretaking, more what we're used to, you know, it's like you're with your gal pals and you're changing and who, you know, you don't worry about whether your boobs show or not. So I, I think, and, I think, and having the, <laughs> having the um, you know, the female gaze on you is different than having a male gaze on you. Chris knows how I would answer this. How would I answer this, Chris? Yes, I want all women. All women. I want crafty women. I want only women. All women. That's just how I am. And I have a list of women in the world. That's just how I am. Especially for doing. I'm so lucky I work for Telefilms. If you guys don't know about Tele, it's a lesbian Netflix. It's now available streaming. It's, it's just fantastic. But it's content for queer women, created by queer women. And whenever we're crewing up, she she will just know at this point because I'm just I'm not negotiable of that. It has to be a female DP. It has to be. If there's someone that falls through the last minute, she will call me and go, Bridget, don't get mad. But the PA is a boy, and I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Because when we did Alex, there was one guy, one guy, and she was like, is this okay? And I was like, I'm pissed. <laughs> but especially if you're doing your own projects, if you're funding it, it's hard when you're in a studio environment. And I work on a lot of different women's talk shows and stuff, and like, all the camera guys are men, but like the gaffers are women, which is so fucking awesome. But when I do stuff with telefilms, all women. Yeah. 
If you're doing it yourself, hire women and pay them. Hire them. Oh, hire and women. Must pay. And for that point, in 2005, I wrote and directed a film, and I said I want all women. And the producers, let fans, women, um, said, he got the Steadicam shot. Like, we cannot find a Steadicam operator who's a woman. And I'm like, or can you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the goddamn universe, and especially in Los Angeles, there's a woman who offers a city camp. Yeah. Show me shit. Yep. They found Chelsea Lamb, who's this big. Yeah. Rock the motherfucking city yep. camp. Yeah. I, I have worked with both, and both have good points and bad points. So I will say, as, as much as we can all like, yay, yay, all, as I've worked with all women, female crew with one guy, and I've worked with a, a mix. And I think there's, you know, as long as you have your tribe and you find the people that you trust, that's the key. That's the most important thing. And if that happens to be women, I only work with women. I want to write right now. I, <laughs> I would like to say that I take. I only work with Chrissy gets mad at me because she's so inclusive. But I only work with women. I hate men. <laughs> No, I hate that. I agree. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. Yes. Versus, like, really just you thinking I'm hot and interesting and desirable. I, that's how I felt. I only had one tattoo, and I got it when I was 17, but it's the only time I've had it really. And I brought that to every audition I've ever had, which is like, okay, go away, be somewhere else. When I wrote Maybell, I wrote it with Fran in mind, and I talked to her ahead of time. I said, because we were friends, we actually did a lesbian movie before that, Jewish, Jewish which is also on um, Tello. And so I talked to her beforehand, I'm, I'm writing this piece, I would like you to be in it with me. And if she was like, you know, she's an out actor, she's on Grey's Anatomy, she plays Nurse Karen, she's amazing, I love her. Um, but I mean, when I first kind of put it out to her, I think if there was any kind of hesitation, I would be like, okay, I'm gonna cast somebody differently. But I knew that was gonna be a drama where we were gonna be rolling around in bed. And besides my wife, there's nobody else that I trust. I, she's, a, she's part of my family, I adore her, so for, since I was gonna be in it, um, that was very important was to find someone that I felt comfortable with. You know, and she could have said no and been like, listen, Bridget, you, you ugly this book. And I'm like, no, <laughs> but luckily she did it. But that was, for me, it, I had to have, the whole point of that series was the two of us. And if I didn't have the person I needed, then it, there was no point. Mm -hmm. So anyone over there? No, nope. all right, you, in the back. Yeah, um, so when Rachel Weiss was doing the press for this movie, <laughs> All right, can we just take a moment? <laughs> can we just pour one out for that stupid fucking spin? Can we just pour one out? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Make some I said, yeah, boo! All right, if anyone liked it, I'm sorry. That I don't want to yuck your yum. Some people might have something nasty. I'm sorry if I just yucked your yum, but some people really didn't like that. Okay, she said it was the most beautiful love scene ever. Go ahead. She hates this movie that much. <laughs> having a love scene unless it's essential to the story. I mean, you always can tell those movies that you're watching and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> these girls in bed because they think the audience wants it or needs it. Well, if you're a filmmaker or a storyteller who wants to have a beautiful sex scene in their movie, write a story that really should include 
a sex scene. Yeah. Don't just put it in there for gratuitous reasons, because our audience always knows that. And, yeah. and, and you know, we, you guys can go watch some, some fucking girl on girl soft porn if that's all you want. But for me, the, the sex scene always has to be emotionally driven and always has to be part of the story, right? And so I get why Rachel would feel that way about that scene. I get it. I have nothing to say about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've only, most of the, yeah. I, we're talking about Rachel saying I, this I'm was saying the was, one. Was, so the, so yeah. I mean, so that's the assumption then is all the other sex scenes she had then weren't really part of the narrative. As and much so as this I don't know. Perhaps. I thought they were pretty gratuitous. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. Zero Well, I know, those two, I know those two women, uh, I mean, bonded greatly over that film, so that might be something else, too. I think if they had some kind of connection or intimacy or friendship that the ladies might have not had with other co-stars that might have added, added to as well. Yep. But I love the fact that this was her film. This was her project that she got off the ground. And she felt that way. I mean, I think that's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I know as a writer, sometimes like you might want to have this whole choreographed scene right now, and I, and I don't suggest doing that. No. I don't because it, it's just gonna you might turn people off. You might turn a director off or, right, or actors off. You know, you might be like, and then she caresses her left breast, and it's like you might have this idea in your head, but. I would not go that that route. So. Yeah, I mean, I think there's. So I think it, so. Think of it this way. This is how I always. I even look at a kiss this way. Like it's it's all telling a story. Like it's it's like telling a story within a story. Like just like that first time. I'm trying to think. If there's some. There's. I know some really good examples, but I can't. Oh, what's that? Um, shit. What's that? Um, Spanish. Um, telenovela. Amari. No, it's Jay. No, Julian Tino. Do you see their first kiss in the pool? Yeah. That is telling a story. You can find it somewhere on YouTube. Yeah. It's really, it's this like, we want to do, I want to kiss you, you want to kiss me, or like in close proximity. And like when you watch that, you can see the person who moves in first, the hesitation, the moving back, the moving in. Like it's telling, and I know, right? But see that feeling you have? It's that telling, is well done. That's telling a story. So whoever directed that. You're going to watch that later again today. <laughs> <laughs> Job of telling that, that, that kiss is its own story. Like yep. if you look back at everything before that, that kiss tells that story of that journey every bit before that. And it's, that's why we get those feels and you go, oh, that again. Yes. And then you go and watch it again. So I think in between, like if something is moving towards that sex scene, you can write that like they're they're you know in the in the hallway and they move to the door and they they lean up against the door and she you you can do stuff like that that leads up to it but then you, know, you don't have to get into a super amount of detail because the director should if she's you know um, has the same philosophy I do will tell the story of everything leading up to that in the first kiss in that sex scene in the moving up to it. And you have to communicate that story to your actors because they're so nervous that one of the ways I can get break through the nervousness is to say, you're telling a story in this kiss. It's this moment and then this moment and then this moment. And when an actor thinks in like beats and moments and recognizes they're telling a story within this piece, it makes it that much more meaningful and that much easier to to, to direct it. And like, like, <laughs> um, one more question, then we're out of here. Who's at the last question? Yep. Hi, Bridget. Um, do you ever feel, when you're a dead, dead actor, you know, how to tell the story, and what that becomes a little bit of a do you feel pressure to kind of keep the body together, whether they're out of the room or not? Like, is there a struggle out there that's not 100% all the time, like, since I was born, like, that's <laughs> Making movies is yeah. like what the fuck? <laughs> what about, yeah, like always. Like the yeah. pressure is huge. Yeah, I think part of it for me is not that that, and I talk about this a lot. My thing that I'm going for is more parody than showing like the world what lesbian sex looks like. But it's like the fact that we deserve to see ourselves and our stories on screen. Wait, parody, P A R I T Y. Parody. Or not parody. Not parody. <laughs> parody. <laughs> parody. 
queer. The word no, no, queer. I understand. Okay. Parody, like, like the street people get a lot more than, than, than we do. And so it's, it's making sure that there's a space out there where if you're looking for, to see yourself and to see your experience and to see that first kiss moment, to see that thing, it's there. Um, and, and so I, I don't, I don't think my passion is the strongest one of yours, but it's definitely there, there, it rides on that. I've been lucky enough that every time I've been in a love scene with a woman, it's I've been cast opposite a lesbian, a real life lesbian, which is always high, right? Anyway, um, so there's automatically authenticity there because we we know. I mean, everyone's different. Some lesbians like to spit each other's mouths. Apparently, I don't know why I did that. I didn't know that either. I didn't know that. I mean, actually, I, I had to run and pee, but I would like to just. We're talking about disobedience. Did you see that movie? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, there's a lot of things I loved about it, but I will say that when I saw that scene where she spits in her mouth, I was like, mm -hmm. everyone's gonna think lesbians. When you got all the Rachels in the movie, as like everyone's watching, like they're literally gonna think that like that's, that's a lesbian thing, and I'm just like, we're not there yet. <laughs> I'm just like, no, that's them, and that's cool. And that, that to me, I was like, God damn it! No, <laughs> like, 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 like if a straight girl I have sex with is gonna spit in my mouth. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking the thing to take away. Black hair mostly doesn't make love to puppets. Oh, 